miss me at home? Do they miss me? Twould be an assurance most dear to know that this moment some loved one were saying, I wish he were here. To feel that the group at the fireside were thinking of me as I roam. Oh yes, twould be joy beyond measure to know that they miss me at home. In 1861, there was a vacant chair at the Caldwell family table in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Annie Hall Caldwell and her four young children desperately missed the beloved husband and father who had marched off to war with the Union Army in June. James Smith Caldwell had actually volunteered his service within a week after the shelling of Fort Sumter in South Carolina, despite being nearly 50 years old. The prominent local attorney felt compelled by sense of duty and love of country to join the fight. He was subsequently elected lieutenant of a group of fellow volunteers called the Carlisle Fincibles. The problem was that Caldwell joined the war without consulting his younger southern-born wife. For months, she could hardly contain her anger. This terrible war was only concocted between Jeff Davis and Lincoln to deprive good wives of their husbands and thereby try their tempers not a little. Today, most of what we know about James and Annie Caldwell comes from their remarkably candid letters written during Lieutenant Caldwell's service in the Army of the Potomac. Anne Barbara Hall Caldwell was only 28 when the war began. She not only lacked her husband's conviction about the Union cause, but also dreaded life for their four children without him. As a young girl, Anne Hall had lost her own father. It was because of his death and concerns about the future that her widowed mother moved their large family from Baltimore to Carlisle. By contrast, the Caldwell family had been among the earliest and most prominent settlers of the Cumberland Valley. Caldwell's grandfather fought in the Revolutionary War. By June 6, 1861, James Caldwell had responded to the call for Union troops and was ready to leave Carlisle with the men of the Carlisle Fencibles. Caldwell accepted a regimental flag from the ladies of Carlisle. On the day of departure, the star-spangled banner swelled in the air and the soldiers embarked on the train heading toward Camp Wayne in Westchester, Pennsylvania. At Camp Wayne, Caldwell received his first lessons in soldiering and a unit from Carlisle became transformed into the 7th Pennsylvania Reserves. Caldwell described the experience in letters home in glowing terms. He was happy with his choice. Alone at home with the children, Annie was more anxious about their fate. My very dear husband, I sometimes think I have been too careless and ungrateful regarding the blessings of my past life, and now God is punishing me. I hope for future good. My dearest husband, don't be angry with me, but I feel so choked up this evening. Although he dismissed Annie's fears for months, eventually the separation from his family caused James to soften his heart. The refrain of a common camp song brought tears to his eyes near the anniversary of his marriage. You speak of the anniversary of our marriage. This reminds me that every Sunday the band plays two or three times as a church call to collect the soldiers for preaching. And one of the tunes they play is, Do They Miss Me at Home? Do you recollect when and where we heard that soon after our union? Sometimes when I listen to the tune, I find myself wiping a tear from my own eye. Feeling playful, Annie responded to her husband's rare show of emotion by urging him to write more and by dreaming of life after the war. I'm very much disappointed in not seeing one word in your last three letters about coming home, for that is the burden of my song. I'm so glad to think that the war will end soon, but will you ever be happy and live quietly in a house and just have youngsters and one Annie Caldwell to review? In the same letter, Annie mentioned her anger over Lincoln's call for troops and closed the letter by letting three tears drop on the paper. Sister Libby has been sitting beside me knitting and listening to my remarks on the war, the government, and infatuated officers without saying anything. She is a good deal better than I, but then you know she has no dear husband who left her without saying beans whenever President Lincoln asked for 75,000 men. There are three big tears which I enclose as a memento from an aching heart. During the first year of war, the oldest Caldwell daughter, Nan, aged six, was learning to read and write. 
On December 15th, 1861, she wrote her first letter to her father. My dear father, I can read. This is my first letter. Soon come home. The man walked the wire and we saw him. I have a sore toe. Shop windows look like Christmas. Write to me soon. Brother's a good boy and almost as pretty as you are. I send a big kiss from your little daughter, Nanny Caldwell. In the spring after he received Nan's letter, James Caldwell and the men of Carlisle sailed with other units in the Army of the Potomac to the southern tip of the Virginia Peninsula as part of a bold offensive in 1862, spearheaded by Union General George McClellan. The Peninsula Campaign represented a turning point in the war. Union troops did not succeed in capturing the Confederate capital in Richmond, but the bloodshed skyrocketed. The campaign also brought about the elevation of Robert E. Lee as commander of the Confederate Army. By the fall of 1862, Lee and his Army of Northern Virginia had driven Union forces back to Washington and were preparing an all-out invasion of Maryland. As McClellan's Union forces scrambled to catch up to Lee's invaders, Caldwell and his men were soon involved in vicious fighting against the rebels. Despite the high drama, Caldwell expressed confidence in his letters home. We've been on the march since yesterday. We had a fight. We drove the Rebs clear over the mountain. The Rebs are in full retreat, I think, towards Virginia, never to return. The end of this war has commenced. Unfortunately, Caldwell was mistaken. Three days later, Caldwell and his men were engulfed in the Battle of Antietam, bloodiest day in American history, near a once peaceful cornfield. Historian James McPherson describes Antietam as the crossroads of freedom. In each White House, a president eagerly waited for news of the pivotal confrontation. With a Union victory, President Lincoln would announce his plans to emancipate slaves. With a Southern victory, President Davis would seek crucial recognition from France and England. The weight of the outcome rested upon men like Caldwell and the boys of the 7th Pennsylvania Volunteers. Throughout the morning of the Battle of Antietam, the 7th Reserves fought gallantly, but the regiment was ordered to the front by General Sumner, commander of the 2nd Corps. Private Samuel Elliott of the regiment remembered years later. On reaching the woods, General Sumner rode up and asked, What regiment is this? The 7th Reserves was the answer. I want you, said the general, to again advance to the fence in your front on the rising ground in view of the enemy. My dear madam, it becomes my painful duty to inform you of the death of your brave husband, Captain Caldwell, who fell while gallantly leading his company on the field of battle. Let me say that we deeply sympathize with you in this sad affliction and pray that God may comfort and sustain you and your dear children. He was heroic, generous, and brave, and so he fell while defending his flag. Yours very truly, William Earnshaw, Chaplain. James S. Caldwell was killed instantly by the explosion of a Confederate artillery shell while protecting the crossroads of freedom at Antietam. By Friday, the 19th, Annie Caldwell knew of her husband's death. One week later, James's body was relocated to Carlisle and buried in the old Carlisle graveyard. For James, the bitter, bitter fruits of war were over. For Annie, they had truly only just begun the vacant chair at the Caldwell household would remain. Goodbye, my very dear husband. Do they miss me at home? Do they miss me? T'would be an assurance most dear To know that this moment some loved one Were saying I wish he were here